Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I'm Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. Please look below the video if you want to find the multiple platforms where the Master's Voice Prophecy blog is available. There are audio and visual platforms as well as various social media platforms such as TikTok and Instagram and Facebook, and I've also recently added Twitter or X. So if you're a Twitter user, you can follow me on Twitter. Videos are being uploaded there. Everything that's on most of the other ones that have been established for at least six months to a year. I have several prophecies to get through today. So by the grace of God, they will all be able to go up. The Lord is putting his eye on things that are breaking, even as you're hearing these messages. So one of these prophecies was a prayer call that we had on April the 11th, and I did not record it because it was just a little bit at the end of the call. So we managed to complete the whole one and a half hours. We were praying about the things that we had actually set for the agenda. But then when I was winding up the prayer, when I was winding up the prayer, the ending where we're thanking God for spending time with us, various messages began to come through. And thankfully, the people that I pray with, they always will take notes Sometimes when I can see that the message is just continuing, 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 15 minutes, 20 minutes, then yes, those messages get recorded. But these were just a few observances. However, they are very serious observances. They are observances of things that I'm not telling you now for the first time. As you listen to these things, you will realize if you're a long-term subscriber that you have been listening to these themes over multiple years. But the problem is that when God is speaking continually, sometimes his people are listening, but they're not aware of this gap that would make it very difficult for them to practically take into consideration what he's talking about. So a person might have, for instance, might have heard Russia and China, Russia and China for many years here. But the practical reality of a U.S. war fighting two major superpowers at the same time, fighting Russia and China at the same time, especially if those nations, when those nations come without warning, silently using stealth, it's very difficult sometimes for people to be able to line up the practical realities of what the prophecies are talking to. And that is why it is so important to stay connected to the Holy Spirit. You're staying connected to the Holy Spirit. Most of us, you don't stay connected to the Holy Spirit because you want the Holy Spirit to give you the breaking news, breaking news. That process of staying in a symbi symbiotic relationship with God, staying close to God, staying linked to God is actually a, sp a process by which your spirit grows stronger in the times of calamity, in the times of being displaced in the times of a hard impact, as I've been saying here for quite a few weeks, that's when you will need a strong spirit to draw from. That's when you will need the absolute certainty of your relationship with Jesus Christ to draw from. If you, you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, or you have a false and superficial relationship with Jesus Christ, you will not have anything available to draw from, to be able to help you keep your calm, to be able to help you keep your wits about you. As soon as something happens, if the majority scatters and then you scatter with them, if the majority goes into fear, panic, bad behavior, and you also do likewise, then that means that there hasn't been a strong enough buffer layer built around your heart, your mind, your spirit, so that you can know no matter what is happening outside, the Lord Jesus Christ is your keeper, you and your family. So today's prophecy, the first one, it will contain a small snippet from February the 6th that doesn't have a title. It's basically just a few sentences, but the title of today's message is The Realities of War, April the 11th, 2024. And this came at the end of a prayer call that we had one day before the prayer call that was published, the one hour, 37 minutes one that has to do with the end times. The beast is here. Yes, the beast is here, part two. That's one hour, 37 minutes long. So please listen. The first part is talking about the... Just a moment, please. 
This first part is talking about the Middle East. And the first time I mentioned it was in a prophecy that I was doing during the Slavery Chronicles. That's the Slavery Chronicles part three that is called A Cup of Wrath. And right in the middle, round about the one hour, 18 minute mark, I brought this prophecy because I said that it's so short that it's not going to be able to have its own video. So please listen. On February the 6th, 2024, the Lord said, the Middle East will be in war. The entire region will be engulfed in a war. The airstrikes and everything that you are seeing now are going to turn into something major. And none of those Arab countries you see exhibiting patience now are going to remain neutral. I'll read that again. The Middle East will be in war. The entire region will be engulfed in a war. The airstrikes and everything you are seeing now are going to turn into something major. And none of those Arab countries you see exhibiting patience now are going to remain neutral. And so at that time, I think um, Israel had already attacked Palestine. That had, that's been happening for quite a few months. And everybody's been avidly following that conflict. Everybody's been watching, especially the behavior and um, the response of the United States, as opposed to all the U.S., the United States contemporaries in the international space. So America has definitively taken a stand to stand behind Israel at all costs. And this has set her in stark contrast with countries like Brazil, with countries like Russia, with countries like China, who are part of the greater mass of countries who have been saying that there needs to be a wider perspective on this conflict because it's an age old conflict. It's been going on for a very long time. There needs to be a wider perspective and there also needs to be more of a focus on the fact that people are being hurt, people are being killed, people are being sneak attacked and things like that. But Israel has been very adamant in continuing what it's doing. And America up until very recently has been equally as full of bravado saying that it's standing with Israel and nobody better touch Israel and nobody better come against Israel. And so America has made its stance very clear. But here on February the 6th, the Lord said very clearly that this thing that is looking like airstrikes going here and airstrikes going there, it's going to turn into something major. So this thing that we're seeing now on the television, the Lord was saying back in February, it's not just bravado. It's not just testing the waters. It's not just a game of chicken. God was saying that it's going to turn into a major war. And on top of that, he said that the Arab countries that we see now, who are not so vocal. The Arab countries at this time, we're not really saying much. In fact, if you look at it, you will see that in the UN and other places where they get together to have these discussions, it's more Western countries that have more to say. And the Arabs were kind of keeping quiet. And God said that they, that's because they were exhibiting patience and tolerance. But he said that in the end, they are not going to remain neutral. And I have a prophetic word that will further expand on that, that I received today, April the 14th, 2024. So with, God, with God's grace, I will finish this one and I will be able to get immediately into that one. So a, a war in the Middle East is coming in the entire region, God is saying. So that means that the people who actually live there, people who are not America and not Canada and not Russia and not China, for instance, the people who actually live in that region, God says, don't expect any neutrality, which means that there will rise and come up many counter voices. That is not a Western voice, but the voices of the people who are actually being made uncomfortable and being destabilized by one state in that entire region, acting up with impunity as it always historically has done. And it always has historically had the might, the power, the influence of the United States standing behind it. But now that situation has changed. I'm sure by now everybody is aware that last night there were open attacks by Iran towards Israel. This thing was going on, I think, during the very, very late part of the night. So if you're an early sleeper, you wouldn't have known about it. And watching these things, watching a display of 200 drones being sent across to Israel and Israel likewise countering the drone, countering, countering those drones, proves what God has said in the past from this ministry about the Iranians. As far back as 2019, I was talking about the Iranians and one of the things that the Lord revealed is that Iran is done taking aggression that is American backed. 
Iran is done taking orders from America, threats from America, sanctions from America, finger wagging from America. The Lord says that the Persians have had it. And the title of that prophecy, the first one given all the way back, I think it was 2019 or 2020, it is called the cockfight. And what God revealed from that prophecy is that in the future, when America starts to act up and America thinks that it can use the same bravado and it can use the same talking points and it can use the same threats, that Iran is going to draw blood from America. So that prophecy has been fulfilled multiple times since that time. It was prophesied there have been airstrikes from Iran, multiple airstrikes over the years that have taken the lives of American soldiers. And what God is saying is that Iran is done taking orders. They have had it. And when America speaks to them, they are no longer going to listen. So recently Joe Biden came out and he did what America always does. He did the bravado speech and he made the famous phrase don't. And guess what? Last night, Iran did against a prominent and well-known American ally. And so we are sitting in the middle of something that God says, don't make the mistake of thinking that this is CNN coverage of the Iraqi war. Do not America. Make the mistake of thinking that you're looking at something that is taking place over the distant oceans and you can sit back as if you are watching a program and it's not going to affect you. This is the place where America is going to get snared. This is the place where, as I've been prophesying for years and years and years, I've always been saying under the, under the compulsion of the Holy Spirit and reading from the prophecies that America is going to go out one too many times to battle. America is going to act exactly like Samson. Samson always thought that God was going to have his back. He always thought that the power of the Holy Spirit would descend on him when he went to fight wars. The problem is that Samson began to depart from the mandate that he was given as a prophesied child that was going to judge God's people. Samson more and more began to use his power and use his strength for personal agendas, for personal storylines and personal strategies his own fights that he was picking with people that had nothing to do with being born as a prophetic judge in Israel. And as a result, he made bad choices. He gave away the secret of his strength to Delilah. His head was shaved and he didn't know it. And the Bible says that he woke up after his head was shaved and he thought in his mind, I will go out as at other times. Don't just think you're watching world news. This stuff is biblically linked. This stuff is biblically linked, biblically spoken about, biblically prophesied, and very, very crucial and important to the times that we are. Samson woke up and thought that when they said, Samson, the Philistines are upon you, he thought, oh, I will go out as at other times, which means I'll go out the way I've always gone out and I'm gonna beat them the way I've always beaten them. But God is saying that the time is coming with America's head already shaved and everybody else in the international space is aware of those bald spots, but America is not aware that her head is shaved and in the process of being completely made clean by God, who is going to humble her, take away her power, take away her grandeur, take away her economic strength, take away her military strength, take away her popularity, take away her influence, take away her ability to tell people don't. Going to leave her bald, but she's not going to be aware of it. She's going to go out and she's going to think, I will go out as at other times. I will go out into conflicts as I always have because I'm America, but this time is going to have a different outcome. And so that is the February 6th snippet. And now to the prayer call from April the 11th, 2024, the little snippet that God gave at the end that was not recorded, it is called the realities of war. And the Lord says, the first thing that started to come out of my mouth as I was trying to close the prayer session, give the prayer, started to say that the difficulty in the coming U.S. election is the problem of continuity. Continuity is something whereby you maybe have a sports tournament. You have a sports tournament and over the years, one team emerges as the best team. One team emerges as far and away the leader, the winner, the best. And so over time, the spectators, when they come, they begin to say, uh, oh no, this is this team's house. This is this team's house because they know traditionally when it comes to this final, this team usually finds its inner strength and they become the champions once again. So when you see someone's been the champion in 2004, 2005, 
2007, maybe they missed it. And then 2008, 9, 10, and 11, that's continuity. The same thing happens in the bloodlines of kings. Kings will always choose from their immediate issue, meaning their immediate sons or daughters to hold the throne because it's understood we want to keep this leadership seat in the in the family. We don't want it to go to someone else. And so the issue with elections is that every four years or however it may be in however long it may be in your country, at the end of every administrative term, the elections come up and then the teams go to bat. And the team that is in the seat never wants to give up the seat. If two terms are allowed, two terms of four years, two terms of five years, some countries have terms of seven years. Whatever the maximum allowed is, the team that is called the incumbent, those who are already in the seat, always have more to lose than the team that is coming to be a challenger, the team that wants to come and take the elections, stage an upset, overturn the ruling party, and they want to be um, in power. And that's why elections are usually such highly contentious and sometimes dangerous time periods because of the potential for transition or the potential for continuity. So the Lord said, the difficulty in the coming U.S. election is the problem of continuity. Kingdoms that are established want to continue. But what he said was, the Democrats have the advantage of being the incumbent, and by all means, they will fight to keep power. The Lord was saying that they are willing to fight dirty to obtain power and maintain power. Continuity, in other words, it's me and it will continue to be me. So that's what I was saying. I just kept saying, it's me. It's me and it will always be me. It's me and it will continue to be me. We are scoring as the Democrats and we will continue to score. We are continuing by all means. We are not coming down. We are not stepping down. It's our turn now. So before I go any further, if you're new to prophecy and you don't understand what it is, prophecy is the gift whereby by the utterance of the Holy Spirit, the Lord makes his mind known to a vessel that he has chosen, that he has called, that he has anointed with certain gifts, such as the gifts of spiritual dreams, the gifts of spiritual revelations, the ability to see things and to foretell those things before they come to pass. And that's what the Master's Voice Prophecy blog is all about. This is not a place where I have ever come and told people, hello everyone, I'm going to share with you how I've been watching the television and what it looks like to me. I'm going to share with you five years in advance what I think the future is going to be. And then by some miraculous magic that I have, when we get five years in the future, you'll see all the things that I told you when I started. This channel has always been transparent and told people that this is the mind of the Lord Jesus Christ being brought to them. It is not Celestial's mind. It is the mind of the Lord as revealed to me that is being spoken out into the earth so that when you see it, you will know that no human being had the ability from 2009 or 2015 or 2014, where some of my dreams emanate from, to say from that time period, for instance, that America would become a nation that is going to be utterly subjugated to Russian power and Chinese power. At that time, those countries looked nothing like they do now. They are becoming behemoths in the earth. They are beginning to become very vocal, very loud. And on top of that, people seem to love the vocality and the loudness. People are responding more to those countries because of their approach, because of their diplomacy, because of their innovativeness, simply because of the kind of toys that are coming out of China, the kind of technology and things like that. People like the way that Putin and Xi Jinping are moving more than they like the way that the presidents of the United States are moving. They no longer find the United States an untouchable. They no longer find the United States particularly inspiring. And so just as I said years ago, public sentiment and public interest are definitely swinging away from Western supremacy in general. But these things were told to you years before they have become apparent now. And so what I'm speaking to you is not because I have Democrat sympathies. I've made it very clear here that you as politics, I find particularly boring because people don't display any original thought. They simply chomp at the bit behind who they think is the best and in almost all cases, they're picking wrong. And I know that they're picking wrong because the Lord shows me the realities of these things, which is why I don't get myself worked up over the things that people get worked up. 
It makes me a neutral enough party to come and tell you what's coming. And basically, basically God is saying that the coming election is going to be a tough one because the people in the seat, let me be very blunt here. The people in the seat are going to fight dirty. And it shouldn't be very difficult for you to understand because you just got a few days ago, a full length, more than one hour prophecy filled with about five or six dreams about the fact that Barack Obama is going to stage a comeback in this country. And he is going to be the final definitive dictatorial tyrant of the U.S. He is going to go above the term that we are used to using here for the ultimate leader, which is president. President is a person who is subject to checks and balances. Barack Obama is not going to be subject to anything except the whims of his heart. And his heart is going to be totally dominated by and under the control of the dragon who is Satan himself. What party does Barack Obama represent? What party does Barack Obama come back from? He's definitely not a Republican. What party, you have also heard prophecies here that the Lord says that America is going to have her first female president. You've heard prophecies here that Kamala Harris is going to sit in the seat. She's going to be the first female president of the United States. No matter who likes it, no matter who doesn't like it, he said that it is going to be a tangible reality. What party does Kamala Harris represent? She's definitely not a Republican. And so when you hear the Lord saying these things, that the U.S. election, the coming election is going to be difficult, and it's going to be difficult because of the problem of continuity, that the ones who are in the seat are willing to do anything that they can, including fighting dirty to keep the seat. He says that they're willing to fight dirty to obtain power and maintain power. Maintaining power means that you have a particular ebb and flow. You have a particular strategy. You have a particular agenda, and you would like to be able to continue that agenda. So two prominent agendas or several prominent agendas of the Democratic Party involve keeping abortion, widening abortion parameters, keeping homosexuality, widening, widening homosexual parameters, keeping transsexualism, widening and entrenching transsexualism. So if they're busy with those agendas and they've achieved such strides in the last four years, obviously they have a vested interest in not seeing their work rolled back. So you shouldn't need anyone to tell you that because it's obvious to those of you who watch and pay attention to the political ed ebb and tide out there. So God says they're willing to fight dirty to maintain power. They want to keep their policies in place. But then he also says that they're willing to fight dirty to obtain power. That means that they're looking for ways to widen the power base that they have. On a simple low level term, this could simply be interpreted as, oh, God is telling us that they're looking for new voters. So they may be looking to swing people who don't have a party that they particularly care for. They may not be open. They may not be committed liberals. They may not be committed Republicans, but maybe they're just apathetic. Maybe it's a young person coming up to the voting poll for the first time. Who should I vote for? I don't want to go just because my dad is this or my mom is this. I want to be an individual and vote for myself. So they're looking at widening the power base to obtain power. But much more importantly, this speaks of being willing to fight dirty, to break the usual strongholds that contains U.S. power. All power in a country can only function within the borders set for it. The highest border in this country is the constitution of the United States. God says that this is a party willing to fight dirty to obtain power, meaning to get power. So if they already have power and they want to obtain more, that means they want to go above and beyond the parameters that they have. And this, if you think about it, lines up perfectly with all the prophecies that I've always said that America, you're going to end up with a rogue state. You're going to end up with a lawless government that will be doing things that are not written down anywhere in any law. And the way that they're going to do it is they're going to use executive orders. They're going to use brand new regulations. They're going to use emergency powers. You have heard those prophecies here year after year after year since 2020. So as long as somebody is willing to go back and do the work and do the research, they'll have full understanding of what God is saying here about fighting dirty to obtain power and maintaining power. It's me and it will continue to be me. I'm the one in the seat and I'm staying in the seat. We're the one who are scoring and we're going to continue to score. And we are continuing by all means, meaning we're staying in power. It's going to be us. We are not coming down 
and we are not stepping down. It's our turn now. So that's the first thing that I was saying as I was trying to close off this prayer. The next thing was I started telling the people on the line that there is a hierarchy of power in the United States. So there's grades of power in the United States and the highest visible power that we see are the people who are in power in, in government, um, in the white house. And what I was telling them is, you know, the people in power are very committed to the plans that they have made. They're very committed to the strategies and the agendas that they've already set up. They have plans in motion and they're working on establishing more plans, but they're complaining about us. And they're complaining that the, the plans that they've made and even plans that they have in effect, those plans are not having the kind of effect that they want on us. And that's because they haven't managed to get the economy where they want it to be. They haven't managed to put the economy where they want the economy to be. The powers that be are actively complaining that we have too much money right now. Now, I know uh, that that sounds like a joke. Now, I know that may sound ridiculous because people have been in dire economic straits. I would say visibly since 2021, the US economy began to really struggle in 2021 and they've been artificially manipulating the numbers and artificially manipulating monetary policy, fiscal policy. But the reality is that Americans can feel the shifts, feel the change and feel the downward trend in their own lives. Nobody needs to tell you personally that it's difficult because you see how much food you could buy in 2016 as opposed to 2019, as opposed to 2021, as opposed to now, 2024. Prices for every type of commodity are astronomical and they don't seem to be trending downward no matter what the TV is trying to tell us. But God says that the wickedness of the people that rule us is so much that they're saying we have too much money and they know it because we're still shopping. They know that we have too much money because we're still shopping. Shopping is proof that we have too much disposable income and that doesn't work for us, for them. That's what they were saying. The people out there, what was coming out of my mouth was speech as there. They still have too much money. They still have too much freedom. They still have too much disposable income. And we can tell because they're still shopping and that doesn't work for us. That doesn't favor our plans. That's not what we are working towards. They're still too free. They want a situation where we, the people barely have enough money to survive. They want a situation where we barely have enough money to live off of. They want a situation that is so dire that at last some of us begin to get canceled out of the equation. That's as politely as I can put it. They want us to not be able to have enough food, enough to afford shelter until enough of us are driven off of our property. Enough of us are driven out of the economy altogether. And that means if necessary, crashing the economy so that the jobs that employ us, so that the Macy's and the Nordstrom's and the think tanks and wherever, and the hospitals begin to have to shut down in mass numbers and do layoffs. And even with all that happening right now, God says that these people are not satisfied. They want a situation where we are barely surviving, where we are starving until we get to a point that some of us begin to fall off quote fingers because they want a lower population. And he said that they are not above doing anything to get what they want, including an act such as poisoning the water supply so that 50,000 people at a time can die. They're not above poisoning the water supply in some place in the United States until 50,000 people lose their life as, the, as a result of such a wicked and man, manipulative and malicious act. And then they will call it a terrible accident. They will say, what a terrible tragedy. And of course, they're going to milk it in the media for all it's worth. They're going to set up investigative communities and they're going to have experts and they're going to have social justice people saying, how could this happen? Someone is responsible. And that's how it is here. Anything happens, it's it's a whole spin-off. And God says they will call it an accident, a tragedy, but it was them who did it. And then I began to say that the calamities of war are coming, just repetitively. The calamities of war are coming, the difficulties, the mass movements, and the terrors of a proper war. So please remember what I said in the beginning, 
that the Lord says that a war is coming and this is not a war that Americans are going to be able to sit out, nor is it a war that Americans are going to be able to observe from a distance and say, oh, it's such a shame, the people in Gaza. That's what's been happening for the last few months. Gaza is nowhere near to us. Nobody has ever lost their coffee. Nobody has ever lost gas in their car. Nobody has been affected materially by what has been happening over there in the Middle East. But the calamities of a real war the difficulties, the breakdown of infrastructure, the terror, the fear, the mass movement that it cause, causes that comes from a proper war, not a play war, not a dummy war. And God says that it will be a hard impact. There will be a proper war in the Middle East. It will no longer be a single barrel offensive with one country doing everything while everyone else watches. A single, The single barrel offensive it's over in the Middle East, where Israel is always shooting people and no one in the international community does anything about it. Even the same thing happens when America goes to war on other countries and it is never dealt with. It's never confronted when America goes and starts wars in all the multiple places that America goes and starts wars. If you remember back in 2023, I think it was during the two or three prophecies that I was handling where God says that America is going to start a war with Syria, going to totally shell, nuke, and annihilate that place and destroy it and fulfill the prophecy in Isaiah where it says that Damascus will be destroyed from being a country. God was saying that America is so crafty in how it does its military offenses that America goes out and starts wars in places and doesn't even follow international protocols such as properly declaring war and saying we declare war on this place we declare war on iraq we declare war on yemen america just goes and starts bombing people shooting people nuking people and hurting people and because she hasn't properly um declared war in the international community sometimes people just stay mute they just murmur. They just say, oh, there's so much terrible loss of life. But everybody uses this very sanitized and careful speech. None of the other nations of power, of, of equal stature to the United States, especially tellingly her allies in the EU, they never really stand up and condemn America. And so, as I just explained when I was talking about Samson, America has grown used to this behavior. And Israel, her chief pet ally, is exactly the same. So God says the single barrel offensive is when you just pick up all of a sudden and just go and fight other people and nothing happens. No one else comes to defend, defend those other people. No one else really stands up to, to support the other people, at least verbally. And also no one else definitely comes against the single barrel offensive. Single barrel simply means I have a weapon and I shoot and the other person has nothing and they can't really fight back the same. God says that thing, the time of that kind of warfare is over. We are going now into the time where you pick up and fight. You better be ready to fight to the end because the other side is going to be active. That kind of thing is over. Other people have weapons in that region. Talking about the Middle East, he was saying, and he said this time they will use it. And one of them is Egypt. Other people in the Middle East have weapons, and this time they're going to use their weapons. And one of the people who were mentioned that they're going to actually get involved with weapons is Egypt. I continue. There's going to be war in the Middle East. It was never a region of peace, but now it will have war, a live action war that escalates. So this is what I was saying on the line, and there were others listening. There will be escalating conflict that breaks out. And despite everything done to contain it, it will continue to grow. So you are watching airstrikes that happened. Um, it definitely was past midnight. So you're watching airstrikes that just, let's just say April 13, 2024 into April 14, 2024. And God says it's not going to stop there. This will be an escalating conflict that will not be able to be mediated, that will not be able to be stopped. No one is going to be able to stuff this one back in the barrel where it came from excuse me, please. It's a war that will take on a life of its own. And you'll put on the TV each time. That's what I was telling them. We've come to the place now where you will put on the TV each time and you're going to find a new participant standing up and declaring solidarity with a side. You're going to find a new participant declaring open solidarity. Someone on TV will be making a speech saying, we, the people of so-and-so stand with the people of so-and-so. So you're no longer going to find this 
locked mouth turnkey situation where people murmur in the United Nations and people say, well, let's focus on getting food and medicine. No, people will not be standing up and putting their hand up and say, we also stand with this country. We stand with this country. We're going to support this country. And if there's anything this country need, you just get on the horn and call us and we're going to be there for you because you're our brother. There will be multiple declarations of war and people, this is us, the observers, will finally realize that the thing on TV was real and can harm them. And here's what I was telling them on the line. It's the end times now. The real one. The real thing happening in front of us all. And so I ended the call. I ended the call and I usually leave the line open so that we can talk, so that we can um, share with one another what were your thoughts, you know, what was God, was God saying anything to you and anything like that. And then all of a sudden I interrupted that little time that I leave at the end for us to share with one another. And I said, I'm hearing countries being named. I know I'm talking to you guys, but I'm actually, I'm hearing countries that keep repeating in my head. And I said, the countries that I hear are Yemen, Qatar, the kingdom of Bahrain and Lebanon. And these four countries will go to war on behalf of the Palestinians. They will go to war against Israel. Yemen, Qatar, Kingdom of Bahrain, and Lebanon will go to war. They will not just accept what is happening, and they also will not want to be left behind. A global war is coming, and even Africa, I was telling them, is going to get involved in this war. The Lord did not reveal to my heart exactly how Africa is going to get involved, if Africa is going to get involved with troops, physical troops, sending troops over to that region, if Africa is going to get involved in terms of solidarity, Africa is a very big place, many, many independent countries. And what's happening over there is there's a brand new wave of leaders standing up. So the old heads that have spent their entire careers coming up as a result of coups being installed as U.S. Washington bootlickers, they have all, they are all being kicked out in coups. They're being kicked out in legitimate elections and a brand new crop of young people educated mostly in the West, but some of them educated at home, but their minds no longer poisoned by the neo-colonialist policies of the West are standing up and are beginning to bark back against America and Western nations, exactly as it was said. That even countries traditionally considered low, I've been prophesying here, countries that nobody pays attention to a country like Guinea-Bissau, for instance, most people don't even know where it is. If you ask them where the Democratic Republic of Congo is, yes, because it has millions and millions and millions of people, they know. You ask them about South Africa, they know. You ask them about Nigeria, they know. If you ask them about a small country like Benin, they don't know a single thing about it. They don't know anything about that little tiny kingdom, that little tiny island of Madagascar. They don't know. They just know it as a holiday destination. But God was saying that countries traditionally thought of as low will begin to stand up and they will begin to make their voices heard. And one of the first people that they will make their voices heard against is again, the United States of America. So Yemen, Qatar, the kingdom of Bahrain and Lebanon will go to war. And I admit that I had severe surprise when I heard about Lebanon because I said, Lord, these people were once subject to terrible war themselves. Their infrastructure was greatly hit. Their country was so destroyed. Lebanon had visible signs of shelling and visible signs of her conflict everywhere. And I said, Lord, does this country even have the kind of funds? Does this country even have the kind of um, arsenal or financial wherewithal to go to war? But it just kept coming back. Yemen, Qatar, the kingdom of Bahrain and Lebanon will go to war. They will not want to accept what is happening in that region. They're not going to take it quietly. They're not going to say that today is just another day where we operate as the backyard of the United States where Israeli aggression and Israeli acting out will take place in our midst. And because we fear the monitoring of the United States, we will be quiet. God says that, no, these countries will not want to be left behind. A global war is coming and even Africa is going to get in on it. And as soon as I had said that, that is when we basically said our goodbyes and ended the call. And so you've heard the prophetic word, called The Realities of War, April 11th, 2024. This 
is talking about the coming problem of continuity as concerns the U.S. election. The party that is in place is not going to want to give up power. They're not, wanting, they're not going to want to give up without a fight. They're going to fight, and God says that the Democrats have the advantage, and they're willing to fight dirty to keep power. So please, I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. I'm not any of those things. I am a child of God that has been tasked with reading out extremely difficult and sometimes very complicated matters that get people raising their voice and saying all kinds of things to me that should not be said. And we thank God it doesn't move me an inch because what the Lord says is what will be said here on the Master's Voice Prophecy blog. And I will move soon into the next prophecy. To those of you, so many of you have been asking, I've been seeing it in the comments for months, um, asking about the prayer line. It's not an open prayer line. Um, it's not one of those ones where I get, uh, you know, I get a number here in the U S and then I have a dial up number and I have a code and then people can just call in from everywhere like that. No, that's not what I've established. I've explained before, and I'm happy to explain again that a ministry like this requires extensive prayers. It requires extensive spiritual coverage simply because you have to understand this. I've even been teaching the, the intercessors. This it said, when, when God is talking, Satan has to talk. Satan must talk. Satan cannot be quiet. Satan can never be quiet. And the evidence of him is invisible in so many people and how they behave. God cannot speak and his word be so as it was in the Bible when he would speak and the people would say, yay and amen and stuff like that. We are in times where Satan has multiple ways. I'm using a cell phone right now. I'm using a microphone right now. I'm going to upload this video by Wi-Fi. Satan is the God of this world and he has multiple ways and tools to disseminate his sound throughout the earth. So the reason that I'm here on the internet is because Satan already has 101 Dalmatians falsely prophesying to the people of God, telling them that they're going into times of peace, telling them that they're distanced from any need for sacrifice, for any need for suffering, from any need of being purged, for any need of being tried, telling people that they're in a good place. And even if they have a few sins in their midst, such as the sins that I've been speaking here of in detail for five years, God still loves them and God is willing to punish the bad people and leave them. But on this channel, one of the chief baddies are the church. One of the chief baddies are God's own people. And so a ministry that is speaking things like this, it needs protection, it needs coverage, it needs a banner so that God will always say, yes, I have a standard in the earth. I have a standard that's not sold out to money. It's not sold out to marketing. It's not sold out to ads. It's not sold out to anything. It's sold out to me. I have a standard. And so there, there's a responsibility to keep such a ministry burning hot. The coals have to stay hot. It cannot become apathetic. It cannot become color by the numbers. You cannot get used to prophecies like this. They're dynamic. And yet if you're honest and you've been watching for a long time, and especially to those who go to the blog and read it, you can see a single thread of continuity throughout the whole thing. God has been consistent as anything from the start, from the very first prophecy I wrote, up till now, there's complete consistency in what the Holy Spirit has been saying. And so the prayer line is not open. The prayer line is just a small community where we are coming to push forward the Lord's agenda, the Lord's heart, to keep the ministry submitted to Jesus Christ and also covered by the blood of Jesus because there are many attackers. As soon as I say something, then there's a thousand people who have something else to say, including many of the people who come here. God cannot speak and be in peace. There's a thousand contrary voices. Well, I think it's this and I think it's that. And you're welcome to think what you think. Just know that what God said is greater than what you think. And so I'm sorry, the prayer line is not open. But God bless you to those of you who pray. It is a blessing. The Lord will surely reward you for standing toe and arm and shoulder with the truth of the word of God. Uh, the prophecy for today, the realities of war, contains two pieces, one from February the 6th and one from April 11, 2024. Until I see you again, God bless you and goodbye.